Welcome to this tutorial on the introduction of flowcharts. In this tutorial, we'll be following on from a previous tutorial where we were looking at the anatomy of the flowchart. In this tutorial, we'll be focusing on how we incorporate repetition within the structure. In particular, we'll be focused on the conditional loop. So let's get underway. Once again, I'll be using Creately as the application to build my flowcharts. You can use an application or you can actually do it with a pen and paper. Just for the sake of being really neat, I'll be using this online tool to present from today. So once you've opened up a new document, let's start. What our focus is on is repetition in flowcharts. And we're gonna be starting with a question. And it could be a question or an outcome or objective or the requirements documentation that you've been given. So in this case here, the question is, add a series of unknown numbers together until the user would like to stop moment we have an input which is the unknown numbers until the user would like to stop which we don't know when that is so it's a conditional statement so we'll be able to keep adding numbers until the user goes no I've got no more numbers left or that's enough numbers but there is no output at the moment so we've got an input and we've got a process so let's adjust this and let's put an output in the question by placing display the total of the numbers. So this way we've just changed the question or the outcome or the objectives or the requirements of the algorithm we need to build. So let's get underway. So first of all, we start with a start block and we can give it a name or we can just start with the word start. We normally follow a process of looking at the input, then the process, then the output. So the first thing we need to do is collect a series of numbers. So we need to collect a number. So I need the input block. Now you can even drop and drag in this application, but the best way to put it in is to click on the previous one and click add, and then select the icon you wish. In this case, it's an input output parallelogram. So I'm gonna use the word get number. You could have enter number or collect number. Anything that will tell the programmer when they go to turn this into syntax, what you require. In this case, I would like you to get the number. Then what would I like to do with the number? Well, I need to actually add it to a total. So I'm gonna put, put a process box in and I'm gonna have total equals the current total plus the number. So this is my processing that's going to occur. But the problem we've got at the moment is total is not set. So we don't know what total is. So total, is it zero? Is it one? I'm not really sure. So in our flow diagram, we can actually set this. So after start, we can delete the link, add it to this process box, and we can actually change total to equal zero. Therefore, in total, it currently is set to zero. We'll move these down. So once total is set to zero, then we can then get the number from the user. Once we get the number from the user, we can then add it to the total. So total being zero first of all, would then be added to whatever number the user inputs. So if the input was five, then it'd be total plus five, zero plus five, and the answer of that would be five, would then be placed in total. If we get another number from the user, we could actually have five, which is in there currently, plus the next number and then store that in total. So what we need to do now is put a decision diamond in, and then we can go another number with a question mark. Now the reason for this, this needs to be a condition that is a Boolean. It needs to result true or false. So we normally have an if and then condition, then we can have a true part or an else part for the false part, if the condition returns false. 
So this decision diamond, we place the condition in. From the condition, if it's true, we do the then part. Or if it's false, we do the else part. So our condition in this case, another number. If they answer yes, we need to go back up our diagram and come back in. Now we need to look at where that's gonna go. Because if we go back up and come in here and loop back and run this processing box again, all we're gonna do is add the previous number to the total. If we go all the way back up to the start, then we set total back to zero again, which means when we get the new number, it'll only add the new number to zero. So what we need to do is loop back in just before we get the number again. So the true branch goes up and gets the number. So let's have a look at our program very quickly. We start, the total gets set to zero. Then we get the first number from the user. So this number could be five. Now once we have the number, total is equal to total plus number. So the current state of total is zero, which was set at the start of our program. And then the number the user has entered, which is five, is then added to total. So the equation becomes zero plus five. So the result of that equation then gets stored in the total. So total becomes five. Then we hit the decision diamond with the condition another number. If the user enters in yes, we then head back up the true branch, come down to get the next number. If the next number is two, number becomes two, then the new total becomes total plus number. Total was five, and the new number is two, and two plus five becomes seven. So seven is then stored in total. Then we go down to the decision diamond again, and it asks us another number, yes or no. If the user answers no, we can then follow the false branch. Once the user has finished entering the series of numbers, and we've been totaling them up through a process, we can then display the total of the numbers to the user. To do that, once again, we need to add in an input output box. This becomes the false branch. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to output total to the user. Once we've finished the program, as there's no more processing or input or output to do, we can then put the stop bubble at the end of our program. So we change start to stop, join the bubbles, and that concludes our flow chart for this question. Through this question, we've had a look at repetition on a conditional. We've also done some desk checking, where we've looked at data passing through our algorithm to check that the logic and the flow is correct. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, give it a like. Also subscribe to my channel and have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful algorithmic tools and coding ideas.